Hey, what's going on internet? Joshua Noel from Sunduck Film. Thank you for clicking on this video. In this tutorial, I'll be going over how to color correct inside of Lightroom and how to use the tools to really manipulate our image to kind of create whatever look that we're going after. So I usually post tutorials on how to color correct video inside DaVinci Resolve, but I also have a passion for photography and I thought it'd be really cool to kind of jump into Lightroom and kind of show off how I color correct my images. So I didn't want to use like the most high quality, perfect photo that you would see in most uh, tutorials. I wanted to use something that I took uh, when I first started off in photography about a little more than a year ago and kind of use something that, you know, had a had an issue with it. And the issue of this photo is, you know, is a little bit underexposed in the foreground um, and there's not that much detail in the, uh, you know, the background layer. And I, you know, just want to use these tools to kind of show you guys how we can really make this image pop and add a lot of life and color to this. Um, but first, let's dive into this and I'll kind of get this image set up so you guys can kind of go wherever you want. So you guys can use this technique to go wherever you guys want. So we have all of our settings right over here. And you know, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the highlights and bring them all the way down. Um, and that's gonna take down the sky and it's probably gonna touch some of the pixels on our couple here. Uh, but then I'm gonna go ahead and raise the shadows all the way to 100 and that's gonna expose the foreground and kind of make them properly exposed. And one thing I'm looking at when I'm color correcting is our histogram. Um, and this tells us a lot of information uh, like uh, my goal is to kind of keep this as flat as possible. I don't want to add so much contrast to it just yet. I kind of want to get it set up so I can go in any direction I want. So if I have information coming over to the left, uh, that means there's more, uh, you know, the image could be underexposed or there's more, you know, black information. Um, and if I have more information over to the uh, right here, uh, that means the image could be overexposed or there's more information in the white uh, pixels of the image. Anyway. Um, you know, I'm probably going to just adjust the whites and black just by a little bit, not too much. Then I'm going to add a little bit of clarity and actually I'll probably add, you know, I'm a clarity person. Um, but you know, that depends on each image. So you can really like overdo clarity on your picture or you're not, you know, it all depends on you. Um, just, you know, play with that when you're color correcting your images and then I'll add a little bit of vibrance, a little touch of saturation. So before I leave the basic window here, I need to white balance out this image. So what I'll do is I'll select the eyedropper tool and I guess I'll select, you know, part for jacket and that will white balance out the image um, to the best, you know, to the pixel that I selected. So, so then I'll go all the way down to detail and maybe increase the sharpening a little bit. So under lens correction, I always click enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration. Um, and that will really clean up the image and kind of, you know, undistort the image and remove you know, any unwanted uh, chromatic aberration. Um, and in this image, there isn't much of it, but a lot of image, or you know, some images you know, might, might be bad, you might wanna remove it. So uh, make sure those are checked off. So we got all the basic corrections out of the way, but they're still a little bit underexposed in my opinion. So what I'll do is I'll go to the adjustment brush, uh, make sure everything is set to zero. Um, and then where it says highlights, I wanna move that all the way to 100. And then with my brush, I'm gonna scroll to make this brush a little bit bigger. I am basically going to just brush over them. Okay, and then check that. Okay, so I so I have a basic brush over them, and if I need to erase anything, I'll hold down Alt, Alt on my keyboard. Then I'll brush over everything that I don't need. All right, so from there we have a very basic color correction. So if we look at the uh, original and then we look at now what we have, we really did expose this image properly, but however, it's still kind of boring. There isn't a lot of stuff in here. So this is where I can get kind of you know artsy with it. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll increase the contrast a little bit and that'll really make the image uh, you know pop out. Um, and then I'll go down to HSL and make sure I'm under the saturation window and you know I can increase the greens all the way so that I'll get these little weeds out here a little bit more. Uh, maybe I'll even touch up the yellows. You know, maybe I'll bring down the orange a little bit and the reds just a touch. Then you know one thing I like to do is go down to detail again and under noise reduction increase the luminous by a little bit and then increase the detail. Now you gotta be careful about that, but you know, in some situations it's actually pretty cool and this will kind of smooth out the image and remove any unwanted grain. So our sky is a little bit overexposed and I wanna add some color into it and bring some of the detail back. So what I'll do is I'll go to the adjustment brush um, and then, you know, 
kind of bring the highlights to you know negative 38, increase the clarity to probably full 100, and then increase the saturation. And then I'll take my brush and I'll just paint over the sky. And if I want to, you know, even punch it up even more, I can bring the highlights down. And then bring down the exposure by a little bit and then even increase the saturation some. But you got to be very careful about that. And then if I added too much to uh, our couple here, I can always erase that by holding down Option and just erasing it off of our... Uh, subjects and that's looking pretty good and then if I want you know I can go down all the way down to effects where it says uh, and add a vignette and, and then you know what? I'll go back to my brush and I'm going to do a quick adjustment to this because this image is starting to tear up and when you do things like this your image could tear a little bit so just keep that in mind when you use brushes to manipulate different objects in your scene. So the last thing I'm going to do is manipulate the tone curve and I like doing this because it can kind of give me like an artsy sort of image or something that I'm totally not expecting to see. And the one thing I want to do is kind of increase the contrast a little bit more um, but I'm going to use the curve here so I'm going to create an S curve and I'm going to do it very subtly. I'm going to create two points and just kind of drag them apart and I'll increase the contrast by a little bit. And then under channel I'm going to go to the red channel and I'm going to create another S curve and I'm going to kind of just let this be, you know, kind of go crazy with it. I'm not going to even, you know, worry about what look I'm getting. I'm going to do the same thing for the green channel. Create another S curve. And go down to blue. So I may have really killed the image, and you know I would definitely take this into Photoshop and definitely you know retouch their face a little bit. Um, but you know maybe I'll crease the blacks a little bit just to kind of make it not so contrasty and to really add some of those pixels in there. But there's lots of things you can do to this image um, and to your own image. But I just want to go through the techniques that I go through to kind of find you know the perfect image that I want, and then I can go ahead and be a little bit artistic with it. You know by using the tone curve. You know, it's not always preferred, but I just wanted to go through that to kind of show you kind of what image you can grab. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. If it has helped, please leave a like. That definitely helps me out tremendously. And consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I'll see you guys soon.